Last year I saw Sesame Street Live, let's party. Feld's first attempt at recreating the Sesame Street Magic V-Star has brought over the past 37 years. It was a mixed review. The last characters count only being a puppet cameo and repetition of a song that doesn't need to be repeated in the same format three times were just some of the only negatives. But the show writing and sets and costumes were beautiful. And Feld actually did Super Grover's costume design in the correct way. It was a pretty okay show. But this year, I saw Make Your Magic and I have to say, Feld learned from their mistakes. There were only 8 characters, but it's okay. The show was more character based than last year, probably more Elmo based than any others, but it's good. Another thing to note is that the show did not explore the basic Sesame neighborhood, it went deeper into the exploration. It went, well, basically. Also a thing to note is the cast of characters is almost the same as Left's Party. Except Count is real this time, and Oscar finally gets his much needed vacation from a new tour. As Oscar was not there, although he is missed dearly, the show welcomed Ganger, the wonderful chef from Forshister Hotel and most recently Sesame Street. Before the show, Maya Monster, an interactive meet and greet where she actually talks, does a countdown to the show where the best line of the show happens. Just count to 560 more times and then the show will start. The show kicked off with an overture just like in the good old days. And the main curtain opened up to reveal the street that everyone sees on TV and, wait. Could be. It can't be. It is. The green fence is back at Sesame Street Live. As the show starts as a normal day on Sesame Street, Justin the Magician, which is the main human in the show, asks how to get to Sesame Street. That's when Big Bird comes in. Hi everybody! How you doing? Good to see you! Big Bird then says that he's already here. And then Sesame Street theme song part 1, and Elmo pops out of a hot dog cart. Um, I... Don't know where they got that idea. The opening number continues with a little parody of Peasant from Bell Big Divo. Then continues with a jump rope solo, and ends with the iconic theme song once again. Justin then invites Elmo and all, and he means all of his Sesame Street friends to be in the magic show. The answer was yes. But once again, Sesame Street poked fun at Tigwitter up. Meanwhile, Abby Kadabi in the season 49 outfit which is seen here in the tooth for the first time appears with the help of fairy magic and special lighting cues. Justin then teaches Elmo a trick he can learn for the magic show which Elmo doesn't get. Well actually he gets it but the cloth just had the wrong props at times. After the power of Yet song, Justin then invites Elmo to help in prepare for the magic show. Then it leads into an original song that is underrated and is actually good. And after all this time, what the Sesame Street Live fans didn't expect but got anyway, Gengar's official first appearance in the Sesame Street Live touring series. Cookie Monster dressed as a chef in Sesame Street Live for the first time in over 17 years, is planning to make cookies, which is claimed as magic to him. Justin explains that it is not magic, but science. Justin explains the definition of science and invites Elmo and Abby to join Cookie Monster and Gengar. They said they needed only four ingredients. Enter count. Count says that four is the number of the day and runs off after his signature laugh. Ah, ah, ah. So Elmo and Abby Kadabi had tried to put all the ingredients into the oven to make cookies, but it all burnt because they did not follow the instructions. They then learned to bake cookies the right way by doing a parody of the Cupid Shuffle reworking the lyrics to do with baking cookies. After the whole song, they go back, park the truck and wait for the finale scene to come back on. After Elmo practices his trick again being inspired by Cookie Monster, Elmo, Justin, and Big Bird discover the wonders of shadows. Oh yeah a song from Sesame Street would have worked perfect for this scene. With a little magic, Justin and Elmo's shadows were free. One of the most impressive scenes Sesame Street Live has ever done. After Big Bird went back to prepare himself for the magic show, Rosita entered with an entrance similar to Elmo's in Left's party. Coincidence? I think not. Rosita then teaches Elmo about anything making music, which took two minutes and not a 90 minute show called Elmo Makes Music. As the song finished, Elmo put in a little Elmo's world by adding in the happy dance which leads into a very impressive dance break. Elmo then tried to practice the magic trick again, but a banana was there instead. Justin then suggests that Elmo keeps practicing while the audience takes their much needed break. Act 2 starts with the same overture, and goes right into the bringing up audience members on stage with a parody of Dancing with the Stars, hosted by Count Von Count. Three audience members were selected to dance with either Rosita, Gonger, and Grover. 
There were also three kids who were judges and everybody won because it's Sesame Street. As the actual story started again in Abby's fairy garden, Elmo and Abby could Abby learned about the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly. Elmo then couldn't wait for the other butterflies to transform. So then what better way to learn about patience than by parodying Katy Perry and changing up the lyrics. To help Elmo and Abby be patient, Abby could Abby suggested counting things. That's when you know who came in. From the obvious entrance. Surprisingly they did the number of the day from 2014 instead of the one we recently got hosted by Cookie Monster. But hey it's good to see more count in the show. Finally, all four butterflies. Yes the number of the day, have all came out of their chrysalides, and flew into the audience. Abby Kadabi then caused a set change with the wave of magic. Then Painter Grover came in with a blank canvas and greeting us and saying that he is still a character in the TV show and has been in almost every tour since 1980 and said, Grover plans to paint a picture of this beautiful set for his mommy, and he realizes that he does not have enough colors for the pictures. Justin then teaches him that the three, okay felt we literally already have covered this, there was a whole show dedicated to the three primary colors, and most people remember it. Elmo, ready to give up on learning the magic trick, Justin tells him to not give up through the hit song from the 2012 theater classic Can't Stop Singing, Don't Give Up. Then, Justin tells Elmo that every magician needs a good friend, and they sing be a good friend as they try to highlight the modern show instead of the Hanson era. Count Von Count enters again to count down to start the magic show. The magic show includes a parody by B.O.B. The song was magic because no other pop song would work with this scene. Getting milk into a glass through newspaper. Magic with cookies, fun with shadows. And people getting out of boxes. And it's not Sesame Street live without that obligatory glow-in-the-dark number. After 17 years, a whole new glow-in-the-dark sequence was created. In fact, I think you ought to have bugs in this club of yours. Grover brought out a painting so Justin could use it as a prop to make himself disappear and Elmo appear. Elmo finally managed to make flowers appear. Abby Kadabi then wrapped up the show by summoning bubbles, which I originally thought was confetti, from the sky. And our show finally closed out with the obvious choice for an ending song. Smarter, stronger, and kinder. Confetti was launched. Characters said their goodbyes and the show ended. Overall, the show was better than last year. It featured one more character, explored more parts of the street, had a good storyline, and unintentionally highlighted some of these. Very good but I appreciated works. The show welcomed Gunner and brought a real version of Count Von Count instead of video. The show did not feel like a copy of Mickey's magic show just sprinkled with Sesame. It felt like Let's Play School, Let's Be Friends, and Season 49 of Sesame Street. But with a whole different set of characters, spellbinding illusions, and pretty good parodies. However, the only complaint I have is just technical stuff. They shouldn't have the main curtain closed during the whole song. There should be a separate curtain just for that song. Overall it's not a major complaint, but it deserves to be recognized. They did not update the Count's outfit in Sesame Street Live to resemble the TV show 1. The manufacturers just reused the design commonly used in Bush Gardens for Count instead of updating the character's outfit. Even the cape is the same. They could have at least added a jacket. Or painted the dress Selig's black so the coat won't excess Count that much. While not being a complaint, but it is an interesting fact. They used the old Abby Kadabi outfit during rehearsals and changed to the new one last minute from social media posts I had seen with the hashtag Sesame Street Live. Don't know how it happened, but they are way ahead of Sesame Place and other Bush Gardens parks I know of. This show gave me more hope in the future of Sesame Street Live. Can't wait to see if they have anything planned in the future.